is a practice exercise from page 56 of the textbook. We're going to learn how to use the periodic table to predict charges on ions. First thing we need to understand is what an ion is. So an ion forms when we gain or lose electrons. There are two different types of ions. We have cations, which have a positive charge, and those are formed from the loss of electrons. We have anions, which have a negative charge and are formed when we gain electrons. Now typically we can use the periodic table to predict if something is going to be a cation or an anion. Typically metals will lose electrons to form cations. And nonmetals will typically gain electrons to form anions. So understanding the configuration of the periodic table helps us predict what sorts of charges we are going to see on ions. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the periodic table. And this is the same periodic table that's in your textbook with the same color scheme here. So you can see that most of the periodic table are metals. We've got the first two groups on the left-hand side, group 1A and 2A. Those are our main group or representative elements. You should know that the name of group 1A is the alkali metals and 2A is the alkaline earth metals. Since these are metals, they will have positive charges. The representative elements in group 1A, the alkali metals, typically have a charge of plus one, so they typically lose one electron. Hydrogen can go either way. Hydrogen can either have a plus one charge or a negative one charge. You should notice that hydrogen is not a metal, it's actually a nonmetal, which is why it behaves a little bit differently from the other elements in the alkaline metals group. Group 2A, the alkaline earth metals, will have charges of two positive. Again, they form that charge by losing two electrons. Your transition metals in the middle, these are harder to predict the charges on, so we don't typically have you memorize the charges, and you'll see when we get to naming, there's a way we tell you which charge they have. So these have different charges, variable charges. Okay, taking a look toward the right, we have our, again, representative elements, this time the non-metals, and you should be aware of that big dividing line that goes in between them, that stair step. So that stair step here, that's what separates the metals from the metalloids. And so when I talk about charges on this side, pay attention to if I'm talking about a metal or a nonmetal. So when I take a look at the nonmetals, I'm going to start all the way on the far right hand side, that's group 8A. Those are the noble gases. The noble gases typically have a charge of zero. So the noble gases won't gain or lose electrons. Moving over to the left, I've got group 7A. Those are the halogens, and the halogens typically have a charge of minus one, so they will gain one electron. Moving in, next group 6A with oxygen, group of negative, charge of negative two, negative three, and again, these negative charges only apply to the non-metals. If I take a look at group 4A, we've got carbon in there, and carbon typically has a charge of negative 4, but if I move down to the bottom, I have some metals. So lead, the metal, can possibly have a charge of plus 4. So we can use the periodic table to help predict charges, but we always want to be aware of if we're talking about metals or nonmetals. So the last group I haven't written in, this is the group that has boron and aluminum in it. So let's go back and take a look at the question that we have. So the question asks us for the expected charge on the most stable ion of aluminum. So if we take a look at the periodic table, we should see that aluminum is over here in group 3A, and it is a metal. So we should expect a positive charge for aluminum. And if we look at what's going on with the pattern in the groups here, starting all the way on the left-hand side, I had metals with a plus one charge, then metals with a plus two charge. I'm going to skip the transition metals, those shorter columns, because their charges can change. And I should predict that the group that aluminum is in will have a plus three charge. This fits with what I know, because the group to the right of it has a plus four charge for metals, but a minus four charge for nonmetals. So the typical charge on an aluminum ion is plus 
3. Now that being said, when you write the symbol for the aluminum ion, you will always write it as 3 positive. So when we write symbols, we put the number first and then the sign, so 3 positive. We can do the same thing for fluorine, so finding fluorine on the periodic table. We can see that fluorine is in group 7A, so it is a non-metal. That tells us that it's going to have a negative charge, and based on the group that it's in, group 7A, I know it's going to have a negative 1 charge. So when I write the symbol for fluorine, I would just write a negative. We don't put the numbers in for plus 1 or minus 1, we just put the sign in. So again, you can use the periodic table to help you predict the charges, just be aware that it makes a difference if you're talking about a metal or a non-metal.